This is the Ink Mega Pro Wireless Solar CCTV camera with pan tilt and zoom functionality. It currently comes in at around the £120 mark on Amazon and there's usually a voucher where you can get it a little cheaper. Links are available in the description below, but how does it perform? Let's find out. In the box, we have the solar panel and a mount for it, the battery pack, power cable, user manual, screws, antenna, and the Ink Mega Pro camera. It's quite a beefy unit and feels well well made. It's 1080p in resolution and has a field of view of 170 degrees. It powers through a 4 pin connector which plugs into the battery pack. The manual states that there are 3 installation methods to choose from and we're currently using the extended method. The other two look as though the solar panel connects directly to the camera through the back plate but when we had a look we couldn't see any way of doing this. It has 4 floodlights and 2 infrared lights on the front allowing for night vision or colour night footage if that's what you prefer. It has a pan of 355 degrees and can be tilted 170 degrees and this is controlled through the U-Box app on your mobile phone. Bear in mind that this camera doesn't automatically track movement. It has PIR detection which is designed to pick up human movements and reduce false alarms caused by rain and insects. It comes with a 4 times digital zoom but expect some loss in quality when zooming in. It has an inbuilt microphone and speaker for two-way audio and it connects through a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network. It doesn't support PCs or tablet connection. There's a compartment on the back which can be taken off and it's where you can install a micro SD card. You can install up to a 128 gigabyte card in here. There's also a button to reset the camera and another one to wake it up. There is also a micro USB port but the manual states that this is for prohibited use. Not a massive fan of the huge gap in the compartment because if you're clumsy like me then you could quite easily drop your micro SD card into the unit itself. Before using you will need to open up the battery compartment and take the plastic from around the batteries else it's not going to work and these are 18650 lithium batteries. On the back of the battery pack is a USB-C port to allow you to charge up the batteries if you wish to use something like a portable battery pack. There's a switch to turn the power on and off, a reset button and the connector for the solar panel. Now the solar panel is quite a large unit with it measuring in at approximately 17 and a half centimeters high and 26 and a half centimeters across. It has the plug to connect it to the battery pack and a plastic screw which will prevent water getting into the connector once installed. There's a hole on the back to allow you to install it onto the provided mount, a 5 meter extension cable which means you can get good distance between the solar panel and the camera itself. To be able to use this kit, you will need to install an app called U-Box. This can be installed by scanning the QR code in the manual. You will need to register yourself an account. And once this is activated, it's time to add a device. For our setup, we want to press the first option. You do get options to set up a suite of devices or set it up using 4G. If you have a blue light flashing or you can hear a voice prompt, the camera is now ready to begin pairing. then press yes, give it a name, put in your Wi-Fi password and press QR code configuration. Now scan the QR code using the lens on the camera and you're done. The app has all the usual features that you would expect with it being able to see how much space is available on the memory card, flipping the image, altering the detection sensitivity, but this actually does a good job because it explains which each sensitivity option does. You can change the scene mode which will change the look of the overall image. The LED indicator light on the front can be disabled in the app if you want to prevent it from being too noticeable. The live view can be accessed on the main page and we can change the quality from standard the definition to HD which will improve the image quality but it will use more bandwidth. You can see how much battery life is left and you can see how many people are accessing the camera at that time. Sound can be enabled so you can listen to what's going on live and we can hit the microphone to speak directly through the unit. A snapshot can be taken or a video recorded and this will be stored directly onto your mobile device. We can toggle between the saved footage that's stored on the cloud or on the micro SD card and that footage that is saved on the card can be downloaded directly to your mobile phone. 
beginning with the daytime footage from close range with the PIR enabled at the highest sensitivity and the camera triggers within a second of us coming into the frame. The footage plays nice and smooth on our mobile phone but when we download the footage onto our PC we had a very laggy video when we tried playing it in VLC player. We tried it in Media Player Classic and it was much better and when we put the footage into Adobe Premiere to render the video it plays okay but there is some jumping of the frames. So we loaded up the file in Media Info and it shows that the video stream is HEVC and the audio stream is AACLC. So maybe it's something to do with the codecs on our PC but we thought it was worth mentioning. The footage we're showing has been rendered on the PC so if you notice any kind of jerking in the movement you don't get this when you view it on your mobile phone. So back to the footage and it's looking good during the day. The movement looks fluent enough and the quality is going to be good enough to identify someone but there is some pixelation to the image. The day footage always tends to be pretty good on most CCTV and it's the night footage where it usually falls down. This one isn't too bad and we've definitely seen worse but there is a ghosting effect around the outside of us. The movement is still looking decent and the AR lights are doing a good job of bringing some light to the image. When we get closer then it brings a better image but if we get too close then the IR lights will start to wash our face out. But the overall image is good and it's going to definitely be good enough to identify someone when they get near. Switching on the floodlights and they are extremely bright to look at but it does an impressive job at bringing colour to the image. Once again if you are too close then these lights are going to wash your face out and make you look like Casper the Friendly Ghost. But we're really impressed with how well it's managed to light everything up and the colours look good. This is a test of the speaker. This is the kind of audio that you can expect to hear through the speaker. Moving the camera to a different position and again the day footage isn't really going to bring any issues with it looking pretty good and the 170 degree field of view means it's going to pick up quite a large area to be monitored. If you have the PIR enabled and have the hibernate mode set to 15 seconds like we have for this clip then it will turn itself off after 15 seconds after the first detection of movement. You can change this or turn the PIR mode off completely meaning that you will get much longer video but it will be more likely triggered by things like moving trees. The night footage once again looks decent and because we've got some distance between ourselves and the camera then we don't look washed out and it would be really easy to identify us. Switching on the floodlights and again it does a great job of lighting everything up. We made the rookie mistake of having our phone shine in our face which makes it look as though we're washed out but when we move the phone away you can see that we're not washed out at all and the floodlights do an impressive job. Moving it once again Again, and as expected the day footage looks good. The registration plates on the cars closest can be red but it's going to be a struggle to pick ones up from further away. The PIR detection has worked well and recorded throughout and once again the image quality is going to be good enough to identify someone from range during the day. Moving on to the night footage and again it's not too bad but it is going to be a struggle at distance to identify someone. There is a lot of ghosting of us when we're by the cars so you are going to want this camera set up at a closer range than what we have set up here. Switching on the floodlights and again it does a great job of lighting everything up but we lose quality on the overall image and it's more noticeable on the grass and on our faces as things are looking more pixelated now but it is still really impressive how it's managed to light everything up. Now the burning question is how long will the battery last? We disconnected the solar panel on a Friday at 10 a.m. We checked it the next day at 11 15 a.m. and it was still showing at 100%. We then checked it five days later and it's still showing as 100%. But then we had a breakthrough 56 minutes later with it dropping to 85%. This continued to drop right down to 63% but when we closed the app and reopened it our battery level had jumped back up to 84% and as of today which is 7 days since unplugging it the app is showing that there is 76% battery life left. So as long as the solar panel is plugged in I wouldn't anticipate any issues with the battery.